We've all seen projectors, big, clunky, loud, and in some cases, kind of awkward. Or is it familiar? Hmm. But this new projector turns all that on its head. If you're shopping for a projector, you've no doubt come across this tiny option, the Samsung Freestyle. This compact projector seems to be all the rage, and while it's small, is it actually mighty? I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and in this review, I go hands-on in my home with the Samsung Freestyle. I'll tell you how the video picture is, if it's as versatile as Samsung would have you believe, and if overall I think it would be a good buy for you. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please mash that like button and hit me with a sub. Both those things do help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. What is the Freestyle? This device is a compact, portable, 550 lumen video projector and TV streaming device that's designed to be a gadget your friends will ooh and awe over. Indeed, I have high hopes for this device since I am admittedly a big Samsung Frame TV fan and I've bought two of them over the last few years. The cylindrical unit is only about 4 by 7 by 4 inches, making it very portable. It seems like it's the video equivalent of a wireless speaker, kind of designed to throw in your bag and bring out at a party. While small in size, the Freestyle is able to project a screen of up to 100 inches at a distance of about 9 feet. You can also move it closer and reduce the screen size down to 30 inches at about 2.5 feet. The Freestyle is 1080p HD resolution, and I have to say I'm a bit surprised Samsung didn't go straight to ultra high resolution 4K with this unit. There is a built-in 360 degree 5 watt speaker to handle the audio, which should allow everyone in the room to hear things no matter where the Freestyle is placed. Samsung has built streaming TV right into the projector, so there's no need for any external devices or dongles. You'll connect it to your home's Wi-Fi network or grab wireless wherever you happen to be. You could connect an external device like a Blu-ray player or try hotspotting off your phone. You can control it with the included remote control or the Samsung SmartThings app too. You can also connect wirelessly to your mobile device to mirror your screen. If you have a Samsung Galaxy phone, for example, you can just tap the phone anywhere on the Freestyle to mirror the content there. It's also possible to airplay from an iPhone 2 if that's your jam, but there are a few additional steps to do that which I won't get into here. The Freestyle uses a USB-C cable for power and you can purchase Samsung's battery backup to make things entirely portable, though I am a bit surprised that there's no built-in power bank here. You can also use other power banks, provided they have a power output of at least 60 watts or 20 volts and that they're capable of USB-C power delivery support. One of the key features of this projector is its 180 degree swivel, which will let you position the video image wherever you need it, even if that's on the ceiling. Its autofocus feature will also make the picture sharp and clear for you. I found the autofocus did work well in most situations, though it would sometimes struggle to adapt, particularly outdoors with any kind of chill, and I found I needed to give it a hot minute to catch up. The Freestyle also has an auto leveling feature, which will take a lot of the guesswork out of placing it, and it will also auto keystone, meaning it makes the screen look straight and square every time. I did find that this feature worked quite well. I am a bit mystified though, if I'm being honest, about exactly how it does this, but since it works, I didn't dig too deeply into the magic behind it. There is also a smart calibration feature that allows you to adapt the white balance on the screen based on the color of the wall behind it. The Freestyle does need to stay plugged into that USB-C port for power. When it comes to what else you can hook into it, there's really only one option and one single port, and it is micro HDMI. While this in theory means you can connect devices like a Blu-ray player or a video game system, you will obviously need an adapter. You could also use it to connect a speaker or soundbar to, again, with an adapter. Perhaps the obvious question is how you'd hook up both a game console and a soundbar or speaker at the same time. The answer would be to use a Bluetooth or wireless speaker which is compatible with this device. Kind of oddly, for a portable projector in my opinion, there is also a built-in microphone here so you can access Samsung's Bixby Audio Assistant if you happen to use that, or you can access Amazon Alexa. 
I've talked plenty about Samsung's artsy offerings when it comes to their TVs. The Frame TV here is known for its art mode, and many higher-end Samsung televisions also have ambient mode. Using ambient mode, you can display scenes or help augment the mood in the room with different moving and static display options. Splash a giant roaring fire up on the wall or create a window where there wasn't one before. Display virtual signs or preset messages too. There's plenty of options here to get some added value out of your streaming projector, including adding adding your own photos as well, though you will need to manage all that using the Samsung Smart Things app. Let's get to using the Samsung Freestyle here in my home. I opted to use the Freestyle primarily in our kitchen, though I did also bring it into other areas to compare. We have a big empty wall in the kitchen that's just begging for something to jazz it up, and I thought a big TV on the wall would actually be perfect. When it comes to placing the device, the small size and convenient base makes it easy to tuck onto the edge of the counter and get a great big image up on the wall. Trouble is, the image is not really bright. I initially set the freestyle up during the day, and I have to admit I was quite underwhelmed at the lack of brightness. I immediately went into the settings and looked for a way to boost the light output, but sadly, this wasn't to be. Somewhat maddeningly, Samsung doesn't make it easy to adjust the brightness level on this device. The setting is actually hidden inside a menu labeled Picture Mode, and changing the brightness actually involves choosing a setting called Dynamic Picture Mode. Also kind of frustratingly, there is really only one option for increasing brightness. It's either Dynamic Mode or Not Dynamic Mode. So if you turn that on and it's still not bright enough, it appears you are out of luck. Now I know what some of you out there are saying, turn off the overhead light, close the blinds, and yes, you're right. I'm simply showing you that while you might want to use this in a lot of different places in your home because it's billed as a portable projector, you've got those considerations to keep in mind. In truth, in my testing in several rooms of my home, on the walls and even the ceiling, the video is often washed out in areas with any sort of light coming in. In darker rooms, it does perform much better, not surprisingly, but even then it's rather lackluster. I imagine this is potentially due to the small size and small light bulb inside, but I'm no expert here. I will note the internal fan does run pretty much constantly, but you can't hear a thing. Overall, this projector is a great idea, in theory. In practice, it is a bit lacking. It seems like it's made to be portable and made to use anywhere, but it doesn't adapt well to bright spaces. It seems made for taking along to create impromptu outdoor movie nights, but it does need to be plugged in at all times unless you pay extra for that battery, and the speaker isn't the greatest. On the pro side, it is compact and portable, meaning it's easy to move around your house. The image size is quite variable and there's streaming built in, plus the ability to connect to other devices, either using an adapter cable or wirelessly. There is that speaker built in and while it's handy, it doesn't provide high fidelity sound. In short, the things this projector does well, it does really well. And when used in a dark room with the lights out where most projectors really should be, it looks okay. When it comes to the downsides though, the image is only HD resolution, it's not 4K, and while it certainly doesn't claim to be higher resolution, I do think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. The brightness is not strong, and this is a projector that is best used in fully dark rooms. You also do need to stay plugged in unless you want to pay extra for that battery. And speaking of paying, even if you think you can overlook the cons, this projector isn't cheap. The Freestyle sells for about $900 US or $1149 Canadian. In short, it feels like a projector that had great plans but stopped short of executing all the way on all of them. You heard me talk about the Frame TV, find out why I do think that is a standout television in my full review, or learn more about the difference between ambient mode and art mode right now.